But I want to begin by reading a little short work by an unknown author. You might be familiar with it, but I'm going to go ahead and I believe it's going to segue into the message today. Amen? Okay. A church was in need of a pastor for some time, but was having trouble getting one. But not because pastors weren't applying, but because the congregation always seemed to find fault in the pastors. Most pastors were rejected when the people just read the resume. Some didn't have enough experience. Some had too much. Some didn't have enough education. Some had too much and so on. So one day, one of the board members who was getting very tired of this decided to do something about it. So the next Sunday, he got up in the pulpit and announced that he had a resume to share with the congregation. Most of them just sat back and folded their arms and began to listen, ready to see what faults they could find in the new applicant. The board member began to read, and the resume went like this. Dear church members, I am writing to apply for a position as pastor. My experience is more along the lines of evangelists, but I believe I could fill your position quite adequately. I've never attended any Bible school per se, but I have a lot of field experience. I don't have a degree on the wall or a wall for that matter. I've traveled around most of my life renting and doing odd jobs to support myself and preaching wherever I was invited. Churches, streets, even jails. As a matter of fact, I've been thrown in jail several times and been involved in a few public squabbles. I've been accused of causing disturbances almost everywhere I go. But I, have, I did have a few conversions to Christianity during my ministry, as well as a few healings. Thank you for considering my application. Most of the people looked up at the deacon with smirks of condemnation while others chuckled out loud. <laughs> One man even stood up and still laughing, asked the deacon, does this guy actually expect us to seriously consider him for our pastor? Just what's this fellow's name anyway? The deacon replied that the letter was signed, the Apostle Paul. You could have heard a pin drop. Wow, in today's standards, that probably, that probably that resume probably would have been put underneath the bottom of the stack. Wow, no degree? He probably doesn't even have a high school diploma. Wait, he's been in jail? Oh, he's a felon too. Wow, why should we consider him for our pastor? Well, if I were to title this message today, it would be, how's your resume? How's your resume? Go with me to Philippians 4 and 9. 4 and 9. Philippians 4 and 9. And when you, say, when you have it, say amen. And while you're getting there, I need to turn my light off. Amen. Those things which you have both heard, learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. I'm going to read it again. Those things which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Stay there. I want to give you a little bit of background about Paul and how he ended up in Philippi. Now, I read that little resume. It didn't even scratch the surface of who Paul is. So I just want to go ahead and give you a little bit of background about Paul. So Paul came to Philippi because he had a vision of a man saying, come over here to Macedonia and help us. So immediately he went to Philippi. The Lord had called him to go to the Philippian 
to go to Philippi to preach to the Philippian people. So he immediately went there. He knew it was from the Lord. And when he got there, he stayed in Philippi for some days, but then he decided, I'm going to go outside the city. This is all in Macedonia. So he went outside the city and he came in contact with a group of women. So he went there and these, these group of women, they go there to pray. So he went there to pray. Now you can imagine Paul, he's there, he's praying and he's probably preaching about the word of God, about Jesus Christ. So one lady, that one specific lady the Bible mentions that was there by the riverside was Lydia. You have to see Lydia. Lydia was a businesswoman. She was a, a woman, that, a seller of purple. So she sold probably fabric, purple fabric and cloth. And so she was there by the riverside while Paul was preaching and praying. And the Bible says she worshiped God. However, it also says she heard what Paul was, say, was saying because the Lord had opened up her heart to hear and receive what God was saying to her. Now, you got to understand that was the first encounter with Paul, with, with Lydia that Paul had. And so Lydia, it opened, she received what Paul was saying. She understood and she listened and she heard what Paul was preaching to her, and which led to baptism. And so that led her, you got to understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. She was there by the riverside and she heard Paul preaching about Jesus Christ. She heard him. And so she rendered, surrendered her life to Jesus Christ. She, had bapti she got baptized. And not only her, her household got baptized too. And so that was the first encounter. The second encounter, why he was there. Just think, Paul and Silas and his team walking down the street. And this lady, well, some Bibles say she was a slave girl. Some say she's a damsel. And she's up there and she's saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim the way of salvation. And so it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you're right. We are. Yeah. But several days passed. And he's in him and Paul, they're walking. And she's saying, again, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of the salvation. And she keeps saying it and keeps saying it. And Paul got annoyed. The Bible said he grieved. He got annoyed by it. And he immediately knew that that was a spirit in her. And he commanded that the spirit come out. And that spirit came out that very hour. Amen. That was the second encounter. But you got to understand that he made some people mad. He made some people mad. Do you know when you're doing the work of the Lord, everybody's not going to be happy with you. You're going to make some people mad along the way. So he made some people mad. During that time, fortune tellers, which she was, fortune tellers, you know, people can make money off of the fortune tellers. And so she had these masters that were making, that were getting profits and gaining profits off of her. And so they got mad because she could no longer fortune tell for her. She could no longer see the future. And so they got mad and said and went to the police. Well, it says the magistrates in the Bible. <laughs> went there and, and got the squad and everybody out there saying that these men are troublemakers and they do not belong in our city. We do not receive or we do not observe anything that they say. And do you know they stripped them and beat them and threw them in prison? They shackled them. They bound them. And sometimes we might be in a place where it feels like we have nowhere out that we feel like we don't have anyone to call on. But you know we can call on Jesus Christ. He's our resource. He's our lifeline. We can always call on him. And don't you know in the midnight hour, Paul and Silas, they were praying, and they were singing hymns unto Jesus Christ. And don't you know the prisoners were listening. They heard them. 
they heard what they said. Hallelujah. And suddenly, there was an earthquake. And don't you know, their shackles were broken. The doors were open. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, he's there for you. Hallelujah. And so Paul, like I said, the prisoners were listening, but there was this jailer. He was scared. Just think, all of a sudden, an earthquake, and you're like, what's going on? The door's all opening, and the shackles are loose. Oh, my goodness. The jailer was scared. So he went. Oh, my goodness. He went, and he was about to kill himself. And Paul yelled out, don't do yourself no harm. Hallelujah. And the jailer went to Paul in silence and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Hallelujah. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And not just him, his household too. Hallelujah, his household too. And so they went back to the home. They cleaned up. They ate and they rejoiced. They got baptized, the family and the jailer got baptized. That was the second, the third encounter that he had in Macedonia. Paul, he was one of those men that stayed on track. He fulfilled his priorities. Even in jail, he, he knew his mission. He knew what God had sent him there to do. And he stayed on track. Didn't miss a beat at all. He didn't lose his sense of passion, his mission, and direction. When we're going on journey sometime, you guys, this journey of life, Sometimes we're going to go through peaks and valleys. Sometimes we're going to be on top, of the, on top of the peak and just be all happy. But Paul wants us to understand, and that's why he's writing to the Philippian people, no matter what circumstances, no matter if you're in the valley, to rejoice. Be happy in your circumstances because you have a resource. And not just God, Jesus Christ, you are all the resources. I know when I'm a project manager at my job, and one of the things that we have to do with planning, and I'm going a little bit too fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> one, one thing that we do is planning, and that is um, within that planning plan, we have to count up the costs. We have to make sure we have the people in line. We have to make sure that everything is, you know, the testing and weigh out all the risk with the plan. But one thing that we have to make sure is we have to make sure we have the resources. And sometimes, you know, those resources for us is our subject matter experts. And so when we have those resources, those are the people, when I get my resources, me, myself, I get people that I know that know more than I do. That if I don't know it, I'm pulling on you to tell me the answer. And so we have ministers and deacons and, and we have pastors and first ladies here in our congregation and fellow and all the ministers of Christ and Christians to be our resources. You're never alone. You're never alone. You have those people to pull on if you need help. Go to Jesus Christ first. But he also put us down here to help. Amen. Amen. So now, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen and may do, and the God of peace shall be with you.